Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, so we came across this article. It actually got republished in the Las Vegas Review Journal. Uh, it's pretty cool. Las Vegas ranked as dream city for Americans to move to, study says. Mm -hmm. So well, any, anytime I see the word study, <laughs> to me, it a lot of times it's not backed by anything, but they did apparently interview some people. <laughs> So, but we're, we're going to talk about this. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put up the first chart mm -hmm. uh, that has the cities, okay? These are the Americans' dream cities, okay? Los Angeles, 19%, Atlanta, 18 Austin, 17 Vegas, 15 Miami, 15 um, These are all, like, south. I just think it's interesting they were tied with Miami. But, but if you think about this, I mean... Los Angeles and Atlanta, I mean, actually, North, Las Vegas is the furthest north city. Mm -hmm. I think I think we're further north than um, Atlanta. And then L.A. is south of us, and then, you know, Miami and Austin are south. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do, you, do you think some of this is because they have nice weather? Yes, except for we have not had nice weather the last few weeks. No, it's been super cold here in yes. Vegas. Uh yeah, Texas is good. But what's also interesting is this is like, these are four to five different states. They're not like, they didn't right. pick like Miami and Tampa. Right. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Uh, you know, some of these are obviously um, places where people like to vacation. Uh, they are places that are have, um, have jobs like Atlanta that have uh, low taxes like uh, Nevada, uh, Florida, Texas. So it, it's, those are interesting things to, to consider. Okay. Um, these are some moving trend statistics. I'm going to throw them up here, read through them. Uh, the most popular state people moved to was Florida. Mm -hmm. I think we knew that. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, Florida draws from the whole Northeast. I mean, that is like their, what's the joke? You know, you retire, you move to Florida, turn right. 55, move to Florida. So, so Florida pulls from the whole Northeast. The Northeast has a, a has a big population base. So it's no wonder that Florida is the beneficiary of this massive influx of people. When you get older, it's hard to live in cold climates where you have snow and you have to shovel your driveway. And if you're on a fixed income, Florida is cheap because there's no income tax. So whatever you're getting is not continuing to be taxed. You're not paying super high property taxes in the Northeast. They have super high. New Jersey, Massachusetts have super high property right. taxes. But then the other thing is, remember... Uh, they've been vacationing in Florida with their family, you know, most of their adult lives. So Florida also presents this paradise to them that they only got to vacation in before. So now they get to live in paradise. They, the state they moved from is California. We do know that 2021 was the first year California had a net population decline since they first started measuring population 1920. Mm -hmm. Remember that? We did an article. It was 100 years of population increase, but it decreased in 2021. Right. I mean, but California is still a very favorable place to live. People love living in California. Um, but, you know, kind of to your point, the weather's nice. There are opportunities there. Uh, in spite of some of the California's difficulties, um, you know, the Beach Boys said it best, right? Wish they all could be California girls, right? I know. Um, <laughs> If money were no object, Americans would prefer to move to Los Angeles and to California, which mm -hmm. is also in California. <laughs> but migration data shows that more people are moving to Austin, Raleigh, and Orlando. Mm -hmm. Raleigh is a massive tech hub. It is a ton of jobs. Well, it is a huge. Uh, Raleigh has a massive. Uh, you know, it has. There's some colleges, some huge universities down there. It's a huge medical tech hub. It's medical tech. Yeah. yeah. It's like actually they're moving there because of jobs. Yes, absolutely. And and those and, jobs are high paying jobs because they are in the medical field or in peripheral fields to the medical field. And medical field is growing because boomers are getting older. So all these companies are, you know, trying to capture the demand of all the things, medical services that can be provided to an aging population. Right. Um, top reasons American moved were to improve their quality of life, 24%, live in a cheap area, 23%, which is Vegas <laughs> compared to, they were, this is probably all the people who moved here from California and get a bigger place. So I think those go together, right? Because right. we actually know of people who left California just to move here because I'm working from home. I can now get a house right? and I can have more room and I'm not in a little apartment in a city. Right. Again, you know, to that point, uh, a bigger home, better quality of life, uh, more more options as far as 
because homes are more affordable here than in California, that gives them more options as to what to do with the rest of their income. Okay, 75% of Americans have regrets about their move, but that's but uh, only 20% was because they wish they hadn't moved. The rest were things like they wish they'd gotten a bigger house. Right. So, you know, what happens is when people move, they have kind of this trepidation about their, their new um their new city or you know wherever they are so a lot of times they don't buy if you will their forever home they buy the first home and they're thinking that they're gonna then at some point get their forever home there if they determine that they like it and most of the time I think people do like where they move to so I think that's where that uh, buyer's remorse comes in wishing that they had just purchased their forever home to begin with 25% move from cities to suburbs 31% of rural residents move to suburban areas, mm -hmm. this, which are suburbs. 40% uh, of Americans would prefer to live in a city if money were no object. People are going to suburban areas because they're nicer. They're nicer. They're newer. Uh, they, you know, the U.S. hasn't done a very good job for the most part as far as nurturing its urban core. Um, right. And that's part of the reason why we do have um, suburbans so much suburbia in the U.S. because we have neglected uh, the urban core in a lot of our major cities. Uh, nearly half of all Americans who hired moving companies said there were there were items broken during the move. This is not. I've yeah. done. Oh, yeah. I did a bunch of moves in the military. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest complaint is they broke like a box gets smashed and there's stuff in there damaged or stuff ends up missing. Well, I think part of it depends on, you know, who packed too, right? I think um, I, I moved with a whole China set and nothing was broken. I mean, I, and I moved an entire household, not one thing was broken or damaged in any way, but I packed everything and I cared about what I packed and I took my time and did a good job. You know, somebody who maybe you're paying to pack, they're just getting the job done and it's not their stuff and they don't care as much as you do. 43% of Americans said the cost of moving surprised them. Most Americans spent less than 2000 on their moves, 54%, because they did it themselves. They mm -hmm. rented a U-Haul. 46% mm -hmm. spent over two grand. 37% of Americans believe they did not budget correctly for the move. There was a bunch of data in this about like their move. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought that was kind of, like, they really focused on like the moving aspect of it. Right. So moving is expensive, whether you're moving you know, two neighborhoods over or that you're moving across town or, or across the, the country. Um, and there are just so many costs associated with moving. So beyond, you know, the moving truck and that sort of thing, whether it's U-Haul or, or you hire a mover, you know, there, there's just everything else that comes with it. And I think this, this is really interesting because they did spend so much time looking at the costs of moving. So my last big move was less than three quarters of a mile. <laughs> it was a half mile straight line basically and i got back then i had a bunch of guys who were doing work on all the properties mm -hmm. renovating all the properties just laborers it was literally called them up said i need everyone over to my house on like saturday or sunday and all they did was like grabbed all my stuff threw it on trucks and drove it three quarters of a mile mm -hmm. to the next like literally i got like a one day everything moved Beds, furnishings. Right, except for the pool table, which that was a specialized move. Pool table special. You have to move the pool table. You have to hire a pool table mover. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, these are the top 10. So we gave you the top five, but this is the top 10 of where people wanted to move. A couple of these surprised me. Okay, the top five we looked at already. Mm -hmm. New York was six, Boston, Dallas, Baltimore. There's only nine on here, actually. Um, I don't know why they did, there's not another one on there. There was nothing down below. That's so weird. It says top 10 responses, and then they only <laughs> put nine on the chart. So obviously whoever edited this didn't do a very good job. Um, Baltimore, that kind of surprised me. So Baltimore is one of those interesting cities where um, there's been a lot of urban renewal, and uh, they're, they're trying to revitalize um, certain corridors in Baltimore. So I think Baltimore is an interesting city. Obviously... Uh, it's part of, because it's an old city, it does have a lot of areas that um, have suffered neglect for decades, but they are making an effort at some urban renewal. Uh, these are the following reasons people moved, quality of life, lower cost of living, home prices, upsizing work flexibility, live closer to family or friends. You can go down the list there. 11% uh, political reasons, 
you know, wanted to buy instead of rent 14%. Like all these are legitimate, right? Mm -hmm. Job relocation, better school district. The other thing too is a lot, most surprisingly, a lot of people were not moving like from San Francisco to, to Miami. Although there were, we personally know people who made that, a lot of people who made that move. Some of these people just moved 15 miles mm -hmm. because it's better school district right. or more affordable part of town or nicer houses or whatever. Right, which is really typical. I mean, let's face it, most of us uh, are much more likely to move within a pretty close radius of where, where we live uh, due to schools, work, things, you know, family, that sort of thing, rather than across the country. Uh, these were the top 10 things that they, why they, well, like where they picked their location. Safe neighborhood, affordability, good school district, proximity. Like these are all the panacea things, right? Everyone wants this. That's the thing they say. I want to live in a safe neighborhood where the schools are good. And I'm waiting for the person who says, I want to live in a really bad neighborhood with terrible schools. Terrible, the worst <laughs> schools possible. Um, and the funny thing is I've actually had people like with no children who have no intent of having children saying, yeah, I want to be in, a, I want to like live somewhere where the schools are really good. It's like, why? Well, because when I sell my house, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that this, I'm in a good school district so that like, it opens up the buyer pool for people that right. want to buy. Uh, the next slide, which of the following best describes your move? And then it's three questions and 50% uh, upsized versus, uh, and this is boomers and millennials. So the dark blue is boomer and the light blue is a millennial. <coughs> Excuse me. This was a surprising thing. You can look at all these. 50% of boomers. Now remember, boomers are older than me and I am not like a hatchling. I'm like the oldest Gen X that you can have. He's ancient. I'm ancient. I'm an old Gen Xer. The boomers are everybody older than me, okay? <laughs> boomers uh, are our parents. Boomers are our parents and my much older I have much older siblings. I have old, old much older siblings. Uh, who are all teenagers when I was born. They're all boomers. But 50% of boomers buying a bigger place. It's never happened before. It was the interesting phenomenon mm -hmm. because I think these boomers decided if they're going to, they've got all this wealth, they're going to park it in a house mm -hmm. and they're going to buy a big place. Mm -hmm. And we personally know people that have done this. Right? right. So it's not that unusual. And I think one of the things is that they, they're at, at a point in their lives where they want to be comfortable. They want space. Uh, they just want a lifestyle that they haven't had the opportunity to have before. This is not one of the videos that you're probably used to where we pick some exactly buyer sale data. It's just sort of a generic thing. I thought, but I did think there was interesting things in here. This was the most interesting thing. The boomers buying to upsize. Mm -hmm. They are the wealthiest generation. We did this thing where I think their median net worth is 1.6 million. They are literally once boomers in the U.S. are one sixth of the world's population of the world's wealth. Wow. So think about it. So you like, OK, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, right? All these people, Zuckerberg and Elon Musk are not right. Zuckerberg is a millennial. Elon Musk is a Gen Xer. Mm -hmm. But they are overpowered by all of these people who have all you know retirement plans that they have funded for 40 years that have mm -hmm. that are you know millions of dollars but if you look at the number of boomers and, and I, when i found that data out that blew me away that they were the largest the richest demographic on the planet were us baby boomers another way to think about it these are the people that were the hippies in the 60s and 70s i know they did it right <laughs> they were you know taking lsd and yes. growing their hair long and protesting the government and they ended up Fallen into the trap. Yes. And they became, they just, you know, they said, well, peace and we don't care about the wealth. And then they're like, oh, well, I'm worth, I own a corporation and I'm worth <laughs> billions of dollars now. And uh, I can't believe those irresponsible young people yes. today. <laughs> and they were hippies. They were, at Woods, yes. they were at Woodstock. Yep. Absolutely. So. That's, that's who these people are. That, that's the generation. <laughs> okay. All right. So this was kind of a different video. So we hope you liked it. Uh, th this was stuff that amused us, so we hope that it amused you too. Um, if it was interesting, if it was amusing, if you learned something, or if we just entertained you, uh, please like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, leave us a note and tell us you know, what, what you thought of, of the whole thing. 
Um, let us know if you want us to keep doing videos like this that are kind of silly, or let us know if you want us to get back to um, it wasn't silly. more. I thought it was silly. Um, to more um, hardcore data. So we we want to hear from you. So leave us a note, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.